Well, the Georgia runoffs will determine more than just the Senate. Biden's presidency will be shaped by the results before he even gets into office. At a rally last night in Atlanta, Biden told Georgia voters that all eyes are on their state. We need you to vote again in record numbers, to make your voices, your voices heard again and again, to change Georgia, to change America again. And this is not an exaggeration. Georgia, the whole nation is looking to you to lead us forward for real. You know it. Bloomberg's national political correspondent, Gregory Quarty, who's covering the presidential transition, joins us now. Gregory, uh, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for, for being here. How will the results of today's election set the tone for Biden, Biden's presidency? Well, every uh, president since Bill Clinton has had the advantage of beginning their presidency with mm. control of both houses of Congress. And if uh, both of the Democrats do not win in, these, uh, in this Georgia runoff, Joe Biden will be the first president since George H.W. Bush in 1989 not to have that luxury, which means uh, he won't have the votes to pass some of the more bold, sweeping aspects of his agenda. Things like repealing the Trump tax cuts, things like you know, sweeping environmental uh, legislation, uh, raising the minimum wage. Uh, those kinds of things are going to need uh, a, a Democratic majority in the, the Senate. Um, and so without it, he'll have to resort to perhaps uh, more executive action, the, the things he can do on the edges to sort of tinker around uh, how different existing laws are enforced. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, this is no uh, exaggeration to say this will uh, determine the, the trajectory of his presidency. But, but Gregory, uh, we're, this is Joe Biden we're talking about here, somebody who was a senator for, for decades, somebody who was known and has been known for reaching across the aisle and getting bipartisan legislation passed. Are there moderate, Democrat, moderate Republicans, excuse me, who, who could vote with Democrats and, and help the Biden team with its agenda? Well, it, it, only if uh, Joe Biden moderates some of his more ambitious proposals. So, yes, there are some, some uh, moderate Republicans uh, who he's going to have to rely on uh, without control of the Senate to get some of his cabinet nominees uh, confirmed, for example. Um, and it, it will certainly uh, figure into his calculation in terms of what kinds of bills he can propose. Without uh, partisan control of the Senate, he might uh, you know, look towards some of these more bipartisan issues, things like infrastructure, cybersecurity, uh, things where there is more of a potential to get Republicans to cross the aisle uh, and vote with him, to get some of those crucial wins that presidents like to have in their first 100 days. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it, he is a, a creature of the Senate. He uh, served there in 36, for 36 years. Um, he, a large part of his campaign was based on the premise that if you elect me, I can get things done because I can work with the other side. Well, even if Democrats do end up winning today in Georgia, and because of uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris's position as Vice President come January 20th, she will have the deciding vote in the Senate, um, that still might not mean that Democrats will actually be able to pass uh, a bunch of Biden bills. Why is that? Well, it, 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 we still have in the Senate the filibuster for major legislation. Uh, there have been a couple of presidents over the, the past uh, couple of years where the Senate has dismantled the filibuster for judicial uh, uh, appointments, including the Supreme Court, and for cabinet appointments. So that's good news for Biden. He only needs 50 votes plus the vice president in order to confirm uh, his cabinet and to confirm judges. But to get legislation passed, he still needs to reach that 60-vote threshold to cut off debate and pass a bill. Now, there is an exception to that rule, and that's called budget reconciliation. Once a year, uh, the Senate can pass a bill with a, a, just a strict, a simple majority uh, to pass major budget bills. Uh, so these are bills that would spend money, raise taxes, reduce taxes. That they can do once a year with a simple majority. And so I, if uh, Democrats have that slim majority, you can expect them to try to shoehorn as much of their agenda as they can into a budget reconciliation bill. We saw a little bit of a pullback yesterday in equity markets. Gregory, I'm wondering what investors are thinking when it comes to who's going to control the Senate and what that means for uh, the stock market. Yeah, I think uh, there are a couple of things the stock market is looking at right now. One is the, the coronavirus surge. And second, Ailey, is 
uh, Washington's response to that in terms of fiscal policy. Uh, we had the, the last Congress uh, just uh, last week pass a, a $600 uh, stimulus payment to individuals. But uh, President Trump and, you know, many Democrats are looking for a 2000 uh, dollar stimulus check for people. Uh, that's something that Joe Biden can support, but he's going to need uh, a Senate that's willing to pass that. And of course, all of that it can't happen until uh, they take office. Uh, Joe Biden takes office on January 20th. Bloomberg's Gregory Corti. Gregory, thanks so much for your time. Great to have you on the show today. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.